Um, Alan, if you could you uh, start the live stream, please. Just let me know once that's going. Thank you, Alan. Um, right, we've got a new member um, who's joined us on the board today, um, which is uh, Maureen um, Vieira. Is that correct? Well, well <laughs> that's a good start for today, anyway. Who's um, uh, replacing Fiona Baker as the D2N2 LEP rep? So, Maureen, if I'd just ask you to just introduce yourself to everybody, please. Good morning, everybody. I'm the head of corporate services for the D2N2 LEP, replacing Fiona. Jordan Sweet, thank you very much. Um, Tony, can I just ask if you could keep your camera and microphone off if, um, if you're not speaking, please? Yeah, of course, of course, Richard, sorry. Thank you very much, Tony. Um, so, first item on the agenda, can we have apologies for absence, please, Angelica? Yes, we've just got apologies from Stella Scott and Andrew Mitchell. Thank you very much. Uh, declarations of interest, if there are any declarations of, that we haven't previously had, if people could um, just make us aware of those, please. And I can't see anything there, so uh, we say that no declarations of interest raised. If we could go on to the minutes of the previous meeting, everybody's had a copy of the minutes. Um, so if, if I could just ask if anyone has any issues with the minutes, if they could um, uh, make them known, please. Uh, I I can't see any uh, any hands raised there. So if I could have a forwarder to yeah, uh, happy a to those. Thank you, and Maggie for second. That's great. And if we have no objections, we'll have those moved as a true record. Thank you. Um, we get on to the main business of the meeting. So um, first of all. Uh, an update on programme milestones. Uh, I believe, Steve, are you going to present this for us? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Steve. So the report is in front of members. You'll recall from um, the previous board meeting that we're now working to a slightly compressed timetable in order to meet um, the government's revised deadlines uh, for project summary submissions. Um, the stable block managed workspace units uh, were due to have submitted uh, con uh, to have achieved consent for their planning application in January. That's been deferred to February. I can confirm that's definitely going to February planning committee because in my role as head of planning, I've just signed that report off to go to the committee. So that will be on the 6th of February that uh, that planning application will be considered. Um, in terms of the West Park Leisure Hub, uh, we've had the first tranche of government funding released um, in this this month, uh, which was, members will recall, is a month behind the government's original uh, that uh, process. However, the submission of <coughs> uh, completion of designs, commencement of construction and planning is, is still deferred, uh, awaiting conclusion of the, the way forward. On, um, on the associated bridge design elements. Um, in terms of the various uh, business case approval processes, we have received and submitted a business case for Long Eaton High Street uh, to our external uh, appraiser for assessment. Um, and that was on time in December. Um, and we've also received and been able to submit for external appraisal, the business case for the Long Eaton Walking and Cycling Network, though that was only in January, so not on, on target. So those two are uh, one running to time, the other running slightly behind time. And for reasons set out later on this agenda, uh, we've received an outline business case 
for the Derby Road Junctions project, but we have not progressed that to external appraisal. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions, Chair. Uh, has anybody got anything that they, they'd like to ask Steve? Um, I can't see any hands raised, Steve, but could, could I could I just ask, is there anything that you're aware of that could pose as problems for hitting the, the what are now the very imminent government deadlines? Um, the two live business cases we have yet to get through process in order to achieve project summary um, they are both in progress, but I, I'm, I'm not going to uh, mislead the board in saying that they're absolutely guaranteed to, to get through to you in February. Um, you can see from the milestones report that the high street business case is on target and that the walking and cycling network business case was slightly behind. Um, and I think that reflects the a position as of today in terms of the progress of, of, of those business cases. So uh, I'm still anticipating that the Long Eaton High Street project will progress on time and I have to raise that there's going to be a question mark about whether the walking and cycling network manages to get to February board, um, which would raise the possibility of the slippage to March board. And I'm just raising that as a possibility at this stage so that um, you know, border aware of, of the pressures within that system. The, uh, we have two different business case writers here, so that means that we've got double capacity. You know, there's no conflict in that sense, but we have one external ass assessor um, and it's getting these projects through external assessment. And just for, you know, the board's um, awareness, We've never had a single business case go through the assessor at the first ask. We have a very thorough external appraiser of business cases. That's a deliberate and necessary process, but as we'll no doubt be returning to later on this agenda, signing off the business case is not a tick box process. It's, it's a thorough um, and involved procedure, um, and it always involves additional work. Thanks, Steve. Uh, I am right, though, in saying that the, if it slips to March, that's absolutely last chance saloon, isn't it? There is nowhere to go after that. Absolutely, which is, Chair, why we've been endeavouring to get things to... Our goal is to get to get everything before the board in February, because you are quite correct. Uh, once we get to March board meeting, it's the end of the line. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Uh, James Gregory. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Steve. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thanks for the update, Steve. Steve, just a quick question. Is there any more that um, board members uh, need to do or could do to, to smooth the path and uh, support you and your team in, in your work? Well, many, many thanks for that, that question, James. Um, um, I'm, we're very much focused at this stage on on these these business case processes and getting them then through um, that that process. It's a very technical part of the, of the whole town deal procedure. Um, and um, as I think I might have alluded to, one of the issues is is um, the size of the pipe, as it were, <laughs> in terms of, of of getting these these projects through. And um, re regrettably, additional hands at the deck isn't really necessarily going to going to be an assistance in this case it's it's getting things you know sequenced in, a, in, a, in an appropriate way um my colleague jill stewart is on the call is is working rather feverishly um on this issue and in particular liaising between business case writers and the external assurers to ensure that that communication is clear um so that we can get towards those 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 uh, positive um, outputs. Thank you, Steve. Thank, thank, thank you, Steve. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks, James. Uh, Carol Hart, Councillor Hart. Right. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chair. I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, it's one of those things, I think the, the champions are 
dying to get involved and want to do more. Uh, and I know that, um, you know, that Steve, you, you know, you will involve them as much as you can. But there are certain things, unfortunately, that officers have to do. And it? And it's, um, yeah, so I, I can understand. I know, you know, one, two of the champions feel as though they really would like to get more involved. But it is at that stage where really there's not an awful lot that they can do as it? it's the background work that you're doing. So, uh, yeah, just to sort of say, you know, I think that we will use the champions as much as we can and in any way um, that we can, especially to get the message out there to the to residents as well of, as to what is happening. So it's just just an observation. Thanks, Carol. Um, has anyone got any other questions for Steve on the um, programme milestones? OK, uh, thank you very much. If we can move on to the um, to the next item, um, which is the project adjustment for the Derby Road junctions, um, commonly known as Long Eaton Green project. Steve, if uh, you want to carry on with that, then please. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is an example of how the business case and project summary process is far more than just a, a tick box procedural element. It's actually a functional um, and necessary part of um, the control of the, the public funds that, that uh, we are entrusted with through the town deal process. The report, which is in front of members, which I hope many uh, members will have read, um, fundamentally, the business case that has been produced for the uh, Derby Road Junctions project has concluded that there are insufficient public benefits for the project to proceed. Now, to put that in, in the simplest of terms, it's not worth taxpayers' money to pay for the scheme because the taxpayer won't get sufficient benefits back for their investment. Now. There's a whole set of technical reasons why this, this has arisen, and I will outline them. I'll start with the proposition that we always knew we would have to look to non-transport benefits for this project to help support the business case. The, the business case process did find over three million pounds of non-transport benefits. That's benefits essentially to health, and to the functioning of the town centre from an improved town centre gateway. The problem is that it couldn't find additional transport benefits and three million pounds of benefits does not cover the cost of carrying out the works. And essentially, um, and at the, this business case process and the value for money assessment is all about does the value of the scheme outweigh the cost of the scheme? It's fairly fairly straightforward in that sense. Now, a highway scheme classically looks to highways outputs in order to, to, to justify its progress. And those outputs normally come in two forms. They come in the form of time saving and they come in the form of accident reduction. Now, when we consulted on this project to the wider public, what the public told us was they wanted a scheme that would address the gridlock that occurs at these junctions at peak times. And that's the scheme that was designed and tested through the business case process. And the scheme proposed did address congestion at peak times, but at the expense of free flowing traffic outside of peak times, because essentially what we have at the moment is a roundabout system that is free flowing outside of peak times, but experiences gridlock during peak times. Once you have a roundabout system, the only sort of way to go with a junction is to introduce a traffic light control approach that can guarantee junction function during peak times, avoiding the gridlock, but it induces delays outside of the peak time, outside of those peak times. And the treasury model for assessing these things considers all of those time savings and time delays in the round as a whole. Putting it in terms which I'm sure many members of the public have heard before when 
they pursued sort of transport operate um, improvements. The essential problem is that the Derby Road junctions isn't bad enough. In that though many people on the board will have the experience of dealing with a junction when it's in failure and of the difficulties that causes, it isn't in failure for a long enough period of the day. For those for the benefits of dealing with that failure to have added up to an overall time saving. So that classic source of business case benefits from a junction scheme weren't available to this scheme. Now, we had anticipated that there would be benefits from accident reduction because we're aware that historically the Long Eaton Green has been an accident black spot um, and the junction uh, improvements would have, we would have anticipated to have reduced accidents. However, in actual fact, over the last five years, the Derby Road junctions have been safer than average than, than you would expect from a, a junction of their design, which I think is a good testimony to the care and consideration of um, drivers and pedestrians and cyclists in, in the Long Eaton area in their use of that junction. But what it means is that there isn't an accident problem which this, which this the junction improvements could solve. So there is no uh, financial um, benefit on the safety side of the of the argument either, which was an unexpected result. And it just reflects the fact that though this junction was a national accident uh, black spot recognised some over five years ago, in the last five years, we've actually had a relatively good safety record. And that's effectively what's avoided, prevented additional benefits being found um, from that uh, element of the assessment. So regrettably, we have to come to the conclusion that it's not value for money to invest taxpayers' money at this time in the improvements that, that have been designed for the Long Eaton Green project. Chair, would you like me to pause there to see if there are any questions on that front? I think that's sensible, Steve. Um, um, if we go to Vaughan Morris first, Vaughan. Yeah, uh, just a couple of things. Uh, mention has been made in the report of an improved environment, which uh, I'm not thinking of the roundabouts so much, but pavements would be widened, Derby Road would be uh, you know, narrowed as a road and uh, with the uh, much friendlier to the pedestrians um, and I think is it that Derby Road was going to be 20 mile an hour limit Steve? The 20 mile an hour proposals which are currently being progressed by the County Council are actually a separate issue. Oh I, I that the, the, the and I don't know if there's anyone from the County Council here who wants to talk to the 20 mile an hour uh, pilot project for Long Eaton, um, and I'd be happy to, to defer to them if, if 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 there's anyone from the County Council who does want to talk to that. Now, it would actually have has some good synergy with this project, Vaughan, because I think, as you're yeah. rightly saying, there definitely was a view that uh, that would work. The, the the new layout of the Derby Road would have worked with that, and indeed, I think most users will probably be aware that from the the canal bridge up to the railway bridge, it's pretty rare for traffic to do much more than 20 miles an hour under any circumstances. Yeah, yeah. Um, so actually, for that stretch of the road, you, you, it's, it wouldn't have been such a revolution to say that it would be a 20 mile an hour limit. So yeah. that was certainly was part of the design, and, and that's where the benefits came from, you know, the benefits yeah. of, of the enhanced environment in that area. It was just sadly that the benefits weren't adequate to um, yeah. fully, fully outweigh the costs. Is 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 there in anything in the calculation about twenty mile an hour <clears throat> accidents being less fatal, if you like, less critical, dangerous? The, the uh, assessment did take into account the the whole um, the accident scenario, as as, yeah. as I understand it, and mm -hmm. and you know, like you, Vaughan, I think you know, we're all given that. 
this is a project that we've been pursuing for some time, we all had some expectations that there were going to be these sorts of benefits, you know, available from the mm. scheme. And it is, it's disappointing that having gone out to um, a, an external transport expert to, to appraise the scheme, that they've been unable to identify sufficient benefits mm. to account for the costs. Yeah. Uh, but I, though these are all the things which we we did see as being part of the benefit. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, that's that. And you that's can, why I'm saying we, we were a bit surprised. We we knew there would be struggle on the time saving front, but we were a bit surprised on the accident front. We'd ra really hoped that there would yeah. have been some accident reduction benefits here, but unfortunately, the folk of Long Eaton are too damn careful, and they haven't have been having yeah, accidents yeah. on the road. And that's in essence is 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 what we've been found. Okay, Steve. Tony yeah. King's got his hand up. I don't know whether Tony, do you want to say something from about the proposed twenty mile an hour scheme? Yeah, I noticed Carol's also got a got a hand up. I'm, I mean, my comment is that I don't think we should get confused with the 20 mile an hour, with the 20 mile an hour scheme. There are two areas within Derbyshire that we're trialling 20 mile an hour uh, our limits, um, and obviously we will we will be looking at the outcomes of those and 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 looking at a way forward for for more general use. So, in other words, uh, it's it's an entire coincidence, I think, that we have the town deal, the, the town deal program, and the, and the twenty mile an hour um, uh, and the twenty mile an hour our, our trial exercise. So, uh, so, so please let's not get those two confused. Thanks, Tony. Car Carol, do you want to um, just comment on that as well, please? Yeah, just to bring you up to date. Um, the problem is that, um, you know, uh, Vaughan just mentioned about safety and accidents and everything else and 20 mile an hour. You know, we've got this big thing, 20s, plenty and that sort of thing. There have been some um, trials and different things across Derbyshire, but you know basically it's not been very good and i think that although it's not part of the town deal because part of the town deal as well we're looking at the cycling walking um i think that probably swayed um highways to look at long eaton um because as i say we are doing some work on there um but really basically it is out um for consultation just people talking whether whether you know, a lot of people for it, a lot of people against it. It is that consultation, but it, it really, um, if if it did go ahead, and, and there's no certainty yet, but if it did go ahead, what they want to do is to look at the benefits at the end of quite a long trial period. Um, and that, but so that won't really tie in with our, our town deal. So, uh, but, uh, you know, hopefully there is consultation going on and hopefully people will be uh, responding and, you uh, you know, there is uh, going to be some exhibition and or there'll be offices available in the town hall in the next, um, I think it's probably a couple of weeks uh, to answer any queries. But basically, it is just in one way, it is to do with the long eating because they knew about the cycling and um, walking and, and what we're trying to do. Um, but at the same time, it's also to try and do some meaningful um, tests and trials uh, and see whether it works. But whether, as I say, it will carry on um, you know, we just got to finish. The, you know, they'll do the consultation and see what the feedback is from the residents. Okay. Thank you, Carol. Um, Vaughan, are you are you happy with that as a answer to to your question before we move on to other other people? Well, it, or, yeah, I suppose so. It's um, it would have been an improved environment for Derby Road. And uh, it's going to be an improved environment for Tamworth Road, probably, as a result of all this. But um, and then uh, I'm interested in the trial for the 20 miles an hour because that's going to save lives. Uh, I think anyway. But yeah, thanks for the answers. Thank, thank you, Vaughan. Uh, Stuart Allen. Uh, chair. Um, I'm curious to know if there's any recommendations which can actually take on report, which will be taken up. Uh, the congestion on Doyle Road substantially influences. Stuart, I'm, Stuart, I'm sorry, I'm really struggling to to hear you. I don't know whether you can adjust your microphone or. I'm in the hands of the Stuart, if you lift your know? microphone up, because it's under your chin at the moment. Okay, is that any better? That is that is better, yes. 
Right, OK, super. Sorry about that. Um, yes, yeah, so the, the congestion on Derby Road largely influences the uh, congestion at the Green. So I'm curious to know if there's any recommendations, such as reducing the time at, uh, that the pedestrian lights go to red. It's quite ridiculous at the moment. Um, are there any recommendations? Because traffic quite often gets stuck in the main road trying to get into the side roads. Now, is there, is there any recommendation to pair up the side roads into one-way systems? which would relieve that. Now, finally, uh, for over a decade, I've written to DCC suggesting that you couldn't cure the congestion at the green, but you could make it a hell of a lot less uh, of an aggravation for users by introducing some cross, uh, some cross-hatched areas around the roundabout so that people just don't block it. Now, that would cost very little money, some paint and some signs, and reduce the, the, the frustration of a lot of the users of the roundabout. They would actually want to flow through rather than being blocked by ignorant motorists just sitting across the island. So that's my <coughs> question. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Stuart, I think before we ask um, for an answer to that, Pete, I think you've got a similar point that you wanted to raise. So Pete Wern. Thank you, Chair. Uh, sure that I've seen in my travels around the country occasional part-time traffic lights and uh, I assume the junction is far too big to consider this but I just wondered what the experience is whether it's possible to have traffic lights turn on during peak times or even to pick up what the traffic conditions are at the time so we could have the benefit of this scheme. OK, th thank you, Pete, and uh, thank you, Stuart. Um, Steve, do you want to um, explain the I'll, mechanics I'll kick off. around this? I'll kick off, and I'm delighted to see Joe Batty, who's, who's <laughs> put a camera on, because my first line was going to be, this is the point where I have to explain that I'm not a highway engineer. Don't um, get your hopes up, Steve, because neither am I, but I'll do my best. <laughs> yeah. But what I will just set out is where we've got to in terms of uh, the town deal and the business case process and the, the, the government's deadlines. Um, now, the um, ACOM, who are the consultants uh, employed to assess the business case for the Long Eaton Green, were assessing the business case for Long Eaton Green, and they, they weren't contracted and they haven't provided a set of alternative recommendations. If we were, had we been in this position some time ago, or had the government not contracted the time scale of the town deal process, I think we would at this stage have said, well, is there an alternative scheme that we can look at that will achieve a set of benefits that can be done and for which we can get a, a positive business case for? And the problem is that we simply haven't got the time to design a new scheme, write a new business case, and have that business case appraised and get through the approval process. It's, I have to say it's not a satisfactory situation for us to be in, and I am fully acknowledge that. But, you know, regretfully, you know, that is where we are. I'm, I'm not going to sort of... Um, trying to dispel any of your, any of the suggestions that have been made here because to do that would require you know that vigorous process of design costing benefit assessment uh, and then regretfully we've just not got in the position that we're in right now and in the context of the um, the questions I was asked in respect to the milestone process earlier there simply isn't the, the timetable left to do that reappraisal, which is, um, is is where we are. Joe, did you want me to defer for a comment to you? I'd be happy to. Uh, th thanks, Steve. Um, and, and I shall do my best. Uh, and actually, for a non-highways expert, you did an excellent job, I think, of summarising the the considerations that had been applied to get to the recommend the disappointing recommendation around the the scheme proposal, the specific scheme proposal going forward. Um, so just just 
general, I'll, I'll pick up a couple of other points. Absolutely take your, your point, Vaughan, that, yeah, some aspects of the Derby Road scheme would have improved the general quality of the public realm and the environment. Unfortunately, as Steve articulated, those don't translate into transport benefits. And that's what we have to prove with any business case going forward on Derby Road, which is the congestion issues, the um, um, road safety, etc., as Steve outlined. So, yeah, accepted, it, you know, public realm, the, the quality of the general environment would have been improved, but, but that doesn't directly translate into a quantifiable transport benefit. A couple of people mentioned sort of hatching and, and temporary signals. Like Steve said, those haven't been assessed as part of any alternative proposal going forward. But I think the one thing that disappointing though the recommendation is the one thing that has come out of this piece of work is the profile of Derby Road and the general um, sort of highway conditions and traffic issues. And what I would propose is, although we don't have time to pull together a, a new business case, we do have the the um, sort of genesis of really good partnership conversations going forward on looking at some wider alternatives. They would all have to slip into a capital programme, but there's nothing to say that we can't ask our highways colleagues to look at some of the suggestions. First of all, at headline level, would they be workable? Um, and I'm no our highways uh, expert either. I'm no engineer. Um, and there'll be all sorts of modelling, even hatching, um, unfortunately, isn't a case of a tin of yellow paint, although, you know, there's times that I'd like to think it was. Um, things have to be modelled um, in terms of what the impact is on traffic flow, etc. But I do think what we've got is the start of a, 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 an ongoing conversation that could pick up some of these suggestions, have a look at them and see if there's any that have got legs to, to move forward. It would sit outside of the town deal programme. Obviously, we'd have to find the funding, but I think there's enough of a of an indication of some some concerns that that need exploring further on alternatives that that warrant that ongoing dialogue with Steve and his team and and our highways guys. Hope that sort of brings some of it together. You know, again, not the the absolute answer that perhaps you were hoping for, but I think we've got some opportunities going forward. Uh, thank, thank you very you much, much, Joe. Thank you. And um, it's good to hear, you know, the ongoing cooperation and collaboration. Um, um, between the, the the different parts of, uh, of of government, so you know that that is very encouraging. But absolutely, you know, it sits outside the town's fund process now. So thank you for that, um, Councillor Michael Powell. Yes, thank you, Chair. It's with huge disappointment for me personally and I'm sure for many people who are uh, expecting some changes but I want to say that I think the presentation that Steve made was excellent we can't take that away it's a great presentation and more latterly what uh, Joe Batty has, has said I just hoped that we might get, and I hope the two uh, main DCC people are listening, the two things that cause a lot of delay and not at the peak hours are the two pedestrian crossings on Derby Road. And I feel sure, and I would hope the DCC could have another look, the timing of them for the pedestrians crossing are both different and they seem to have allowed a lot longer time on the one furthest from the town, which is gets less pedestrians than the one that's nearer the town. The other areas that I'm so disappointed is about the bus stops and the places. And there might be something we can do with the bus operators, for example, the yellow bus leaving the green area, the, the place where they stop, they can be there five minutes or more because it's the end of their journey, but it blocks the <laughs> Derby Road going towards, you know, the Breeston end and so on. I just hope somebody might do some simpler and cheaper things. I have to entirely accept that we're not going to be able to do it through the town bid but i don't want to quite give up some of these simpler things 
and I am sure that DCC tra transport operators and the bus companies could make some low cost changes to things, particularly the yellow bus that parks at the end for at least five minutes. They could have a different place to do their end of run. I don't know what the technical name is. So that's what I hope. I am disappointed. But I think you've heard a really good presentation and we've heard some good things from uh, the, the other members of the board and uh, we, we have to, to move on. There's no chance of changing the main thing now, as we've said, we're out of time, so we can't do anything about that. So thank you for those comments. Thank, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Michael. Um, I, I have to say that the, the good thing that I think has come out of this is the collaboration between DCC and EBC. And, you know, if, if that continues uh, over, if that continues af outside of the Townstrom project, you know, and can deliver some benefits, that's that's been a good result for the all the effort that has actually been put in to this. Um, Tony King. Yeah, but yeah, can I say that um, sitting here, I've, I've noted all these comments and I will take them back to DCC and I will see what what can, can be done. It's not my portfolio, but I will ensure that the uh, portfolio holder is, is aware of the comments and, and, and the various aspects of this. And uh, let me see if we can push something forward on them. OK, I appreciate that. Thank you, Tony. Um, is, does anybody else have anything they'd like to ask Steve on the um, on this this aspect? So the actual Derby Road junctions before we move on to talk about reallocation of funding. Uh, Carol Hart. Yeah, I just wondered whether everybody's looking in the trap, trap bar. Um, I'd already put I've taken up with highways. Joe is also taking notes. Um, you know, although this project won't go through. There would still be could some you know some work could be done on that junction to improve and we'll work with highways i mean it wouldn't happen overnight as joe said to have to go in a capital program but there's no reason why we can't do some work on that if this project isn't going through so uh, just to make sure as i say i don't know whether everybody reads the chat bar okay thanks carol okay if we could um uh go back to you then steve to talk about the reallocation of the funding please Thank you, Chair. So uh, clearly, if we can't progress this project, yeah, the first option is we could hand the uh, 6.93 million pounds allocated to it back to HM Treasury. Um, but there is the opportunity, as we've taken under previous uh, circumstances, to actually reallocate that town deal funding to other projects which can demonstrate value for money for that expenditure. So the, the the proposals in front of the board are principally to look in the first instance at the Long Eaton High Street project. Uh, this project, of course, hasn't yet been to you as a project summary. It's due to come to you in February. Um, we've had the initial business case work back from uh, ACOM, the same consultants who've been working on the Derby Road junctions, and they believe that they have been able to find significant benefits from uh, from that scheme. Uh, essentially, again, they're not transport benefits, it's benefits to the function of the town centre um, because of all the, the commercial properties that would benefit from the improved environment that would be produced. Now, in addition to looking strictly at the high street element, we also asked them to look at the potential for an extension project to Tamworth Road. So this would involve uh, pavement widening on and environmental improvements on Tamworth Road, which of course is an active shopping street with a, a number of um, important town centre facilities in that location. And their initial um, feedback is that from from the business case appraisal is that that too would be value for money um, if we pursued that route. So. That is why there is a recommendation that we allocate some 3.43 million of the uh, 
the former Derby Road Junctions funds in order to, to enable the High Street project to be extended to also address High Street and Tamworth Road. Do you want to run through all of this, Chair? Yeah, before? no, I was going to say, I, I think it's better if we ask for questions on the individual ones. And, you know, certainly I would like, you know, just to um, ask you to make absolutely clear the Tamworth Road is additional work. So this, this isn't just allowing for inflation for Derby Road. It's additional work that was looked at. It's been through the business case process and it's work that we can do. Absolutely. It's a fundamental extension to the project. It, it's going back some time, but board members might remember, you know, over a year ago, we did some we did some initial work looking at this and it was principally around the concepts that we needed to tie the whole town centre together as a single functional entity and to improve the linkages heading west um, out, you know, towards West Park and this central con um, strategic aim which was to make the boast of the twin assets of the town centre being both the town centre and the West Park facility and that actually uh, an improvement to Tamworth Road would help us to, to, to make that linkage. That's what initiated um, some of that work. Um, uh, board members might also recall some of the difficulties we had um, during the COVID uh, pandemic with um, queues forming outside banks um, making it impossible to to navigate the existing narrow pavements, which I think kind of reminded us that um, they're not really a, at a functional standard for um, uh, uh, a, a, a town centre environment at the moment. But absolutely, Chair, the fundamental point is this is a, effectively this is an additional project that, and, an, and an extension of the scope and not just putting money more into more inflation management. The um, the cost assessments that we put into the high street have, following the last uh, adjustments, have actually proven to be um, quite accurate. So we, we've got a lot more confidence around the, the high street costs. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Vaughan, uh, you've got your hand up, but you turn your camera back on now. Yeah, sorry, I forgot about that. Uh, no worries. Was just simple one the extent of Tamworth Road because Tamworth Road goes all the way to the River Trent and I just wondered how far are we going with it so, Steve? That, that, a very good question Vaughan not the River Trent now I might have to defer to my colleague uh, Tom Haddock thank you very much Tom I'm delighted to see to see that that hand okay. Paul, could you advise us very fine yes the, um, the scheme wraps around back towards the um, the Derby Road Junction improvements it would have interfaced with those it falls just short of Oxford Street um, it extends past the um, if you can picture the post office with the, the wide expanse and the sort of amenity space um, outside of the, the post office on Tamworth Road um, round the corner, not quite as far as uh, as Broad Street, but uh, in that direction. And then obviously on the opposite side of the carriageway, um, it picks up all of those shops round to the sort of Beaconsfield streets in that area there. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Yeah, that, that's got me. I've got a picture of it now. Thanks. Tom. Um, Andrew Savile. Uh, you're, on, you're on mute, Andrew. Sorry, uh, can you see me or not? Yes, we can, yeah. Oh, that's fine. I can't see myself, that's all. Um, I'm just wondering with this new scheme that's, that's uh, that if, well, or the, the change in, in uh, direction of the scheme and going down Tamworth Road, uh, w will we get to see any um, any of the um, proposed design work that uh, so that we know that what, what we're going to be talking about? Because I have not seen anything on the on the Derby Road ones, and I I feel a little. Um, I mean, it might have been before my time on the board, but um, I don't remember seeing any design work for the Derby Road ones. Uh, but but I'll I'll bow to greater knowledge on it. Um, but uh, but it would be nice if we could see some uh, design work on on any proposals uh, going forward uh, on Tamworth Road. Um, and just as an aside, I think with the way that the banks are shutting, I think any queues outside banks will disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Steve, is this one for you or for Tom? Uh, it, it 
could be for either of us because I think the fundamental answer is about at, at what stage we'll actually get detailed designs. Yeah. At, at the moment, the, the effective designs is um, um, la effectively lines on an aerial plan indicating maybe how wide the, the pavements could be, but that nothing further than that. The the next part of these processes is actually going to be the critical design stage. So, Tom, do you want to pick that up? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, the, the main purpose of this discussion now is to reallocate the funds, take the point on board that uh, members of the board need to be quite clear about what, what the scheme um, includes. Um, obviously, there is the uh, the opportunity at next month where the uh, we're hoping that the uh, the business case and indeed the project summary document will be back in front of the board for the project. And at that meeting, I'd be happy to share uh, a plan. As Steve suggests, though, it is only sort of um, indicative of the areas and the uh, the footway sort of widths that will be looked at as part of the scheme. It, it doesn't include that detail. Um, there will be an opportunity to engage with sort of key stakeholders at the next step, which will be the, the more detailed design phase should the uh, the application to government be successful. Thank you for clarifying that, Tom. Um, are there any other questions regarding the reallocation of funding for um, the High Street and Tamworth Road? So, uh, you want to move on to the next one then please thank you so the next project that we are recommending that um there's additional money allocated to is the walking and cycling project now i'm very conscious that you know we've had a lot of debate about the walking and cycling project and indeed um, a, a series of uh, budget adjustments uh, to this as part of a process of putting together an, an actual business case for external appraisal, um, we re revisited what the costings of, the, of these elements are. And I think it's fair to say that uh, we've raised an eyebrow at, at what was for the bridge in the first place i'm afraid i floundered a little bit in your absence um but i, I don't know uh, whether there was an assessment of need or whether there was any sort of survey of the local local population right so the um the britannia we're talking britannia road bridge it is britannia road yeah. so the britannia road bridge uh, project has been uh, well has been running as a, as a notional concept well before the town deal process um it emerged in original investigations of the development opportunities of the Britannia Mills site. Um, it was then identified at a regional level in terms of looking at walking and cycling connectivity, particularly to the proposed Toten HS2 hub station as being a, a critical piece of infrastructure. Now, clearly the, there, won't, there isn't currently a proposed HS2 hub station at Toten, um, but nonetheless there is a strong transport logic for it which is that um, the population of northern long eaton live on the wrong side of the canal to the towpath so they can't get access to it except at the existing bridging points uh, which in this case is dock home lock um, which is uh, about two kilometers if i'm not mistaken north of um, the a6005 derby road so this would provide an intervening bridging point which would put um, access to the canal um, it would basically about a population of about three to six thousand people would would get a direct access which they wouldn't previously have had so that was the notional assessment that's now being put through the external business case process and that is also in area of Long Eaton that's north of, of, of the BA6005 Derby Road. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Thank you. So, Steve, can I just clarify? So this has actually been through external review and they, they, it, they've actually come back with the benefits for we, this. We have a draft external business case. 
that has been subject to challenge from our external appraiser and is going through a modification process. Uh, thank you, Steve. Um, Vaughan Morris. Thanks, Richard. Uh, all I wanted to know, kind of rough numbers, when Broad Street Bridge was repaired last, there were a few different options, uh, basic repair, intermediate and you know, long term replacement, I think. <clears throat> and I forget the numbers, what the figure being considered at that stage was for replacing Broad Street Bridge. I'll in defer its, to Tom, who's the person who carried out that work. In, it, in its existing position. Um, I don't have that information to hand. It was some time ago. I think the report you're referring to was circa um, 2011. Um, I'd have to dig out the replacement cost that was put forward at that time. I would suggest that in line with the ACON cost that that figure will have dramatically changed um, yeah. because of inflationary costs, construction costs uh, rising so so vastly in, in that time. Um, in terms of the maintenance costs you, you referred to, um, the council spent somewhere in the region of £30,000 um, undertaking refurbishment to a lot of the lattice work, a lot of the seal structure, um, some repairs to the um, the concrete that was spalling, you'll recall, off the, the underside of the bridge. Um, mm. There was an option at that stage to do a more comprehensive refurbishment. Um, off memory, that figure was somewhere in the region of £150,000. Um, at that time, though, because of the existing um, failings of the bridge in terms of its design, in terms of its limitations with the, the limited height over the towpath, um, the council determined that it wasn't wise to invest such a, a hefty sum of money um, in something that had some inherent design problems. Um, so it concluded that the, um, the lesser option in terms of those refurbishment costs was the one to go with in the hope that there'll be some funding come forward to, to replace the bridge. Yeah, just for, I, I just mean, for, just, yeah, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Vaughan, I was just saying, and just for confirmation, we've actually have the business case process is actually appraising all of these options. It's, it's looking at all, all the options for the replacement of the Broad Street Bridge area because we know that there's still the debate around how how we should address the issue. So we're okay. Yeah. Nothing's off the table at this stage no, in the no, business that's, case process. That's what I was interested in. Just in perspective, what what um, a straightforward crossing bridge would cost compared yeah. to the diagonal bridge that's proposed. That's all. Yeah, that's what I'd like to have in my and, mind. And we're 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 assessing all of those. I think if I can return back to where um, I disappeared from you all, what I was trying to to get, and I'm not sure if it, the point I was really trying to cover is that the cost of any bridge over the canal is now clearly as significantly in excess of what we'd originally anticipated. Um, uh, which is some for, uh, is quite frustrating, I have to say, given that um, we've already been to this board uh, twice before, I think, talking about what the cost of a walking and cycling project is. But again, this is the, this is one of the purposes of going through a formal business case process. But it, it requires you to meet certain data standards so that you've got a clarity about where you're going. Now, we always knew bridges were going to be very vulnerable to inflation because essentially they're steel based structures um, and steel is an energy intensive product. And we know that it's in energy cost where there's been the highest levels of inflation. However, I've, I have to be straight with the board and indicate that the cost inflation on these has been well in excess of just inflation. Um, and it, it's apparent that the original estimates that we had didn't include all the construction elements that were necessary. Uh, we're confident now that the new estimates that we've got do cover all of those elements. Um, and we're also confident that despite the, the higher cost that's been found, there are still significant benefits. Um, for example, one of the things that is coming out of the business case works case work so far is that the even the existing bridge at Broad Street has a very high existing value um, in, in public benefit terms. So we're, we're aware that there are bar significant there are significant benefits which are highly likely to be able to justify these levels of cost. However, what what's clear is that the costs are exceeding the budget to date. So in order to be able to deliver 
two bridges, which is what I understand that the, as the board's debated at extent in the past is what we want to achieve. There's a requirement for additional budget um, within that walking and cycling project. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Steve. Um, Stuart Allen. Yes, um, I have a question for Michael Lucking, um, but first I'll have to explain why. Whilst crossing Broad Street Bridge, I've frequently been asked by visiting cyclists, how do I get to the towpath? So six years ago, the Friends of West Park designed a simple bridge south of the lock solely to provide connectivity to the towpath. The Friends of West Park tried to raise 250,000 at that time, but we failed. We asked EBC for a thousand pounds to employ a professional fundraiser, but this was refused. So about two years ago, I was in Michael's office together with Peter Dawson, outlining possible bridge designs. They were very interested in the bridge at the lock, but at the time I didn't comprehend their agenda. Peter said that if the bridge was built at the lock, he would, if redeveloping the strip, the factory strip, make provision for a passageway direct from the lock to Milner Street. So my question is, if option three is built, will they enter into a binding legal agreement with EBC that when the factory strip is redeveloped, they'll deed a strip of land, including a mandate for any sale to a third party developer. So this would mean that pedestrians no longer went along the towpath, they go direct to Milner Street, and it would reduce my opposition a little to option three. So following on from this, we cross Broad Street Bridge for at least once a week en route to the library and the shops. Now, despite it being narrow, 95% of cyclists refuse to dismount. They wobble up the ramps, I've been hit twice, and they speed down the ramps. So considering the next 100 years on behalf of the community, I'm refusing to accept a bridge for option three that's less than 3.5 metres wide, just reducing in width at the very far end at the lock. So I further ask Michael and Peter, will they agree a little extra land near the lock on the basis that Gagarin creates a design that can easily be modified later to the full width, just for the few last many metres at the lock? I would think that by next meeting they could come up with a yes or no. Thank you. Um, th thank you for raising those points, Stuart. Um, I don't think, and Michael's actually put in the chat bar that he doesn't think this is the right meeting to discuss uh, to discuss those. Um, but I, I think I do actually agree with Michael. Um, but my, Michael, are you, are you are you happy to discuss those outside of this meeting um, as a separate separate point? Um, possibly to discuss them, but um, while I agree that we did have a meeting at our office, um, no promises were made at that point, and I don't see why that we will be making them in the future. But um, as, as I, I was about typing, I've declared my interest, and I've always felt that I shouldn't be speaking on this subject at this board meeting because I do have a conflict of interest. Well, that's that's fully understood. Thank, thank you, Michael. Um, Stuart, I we also are not at the point where obviously the final designs for the projects have been um, um, set in stone. So there is, um, Tom, do you want to just explain, or is it Tom or is it Steve, that there will be another opportunity to go through detailed design and that we're not actually at that point yet? Happy to, um, Chair. The, the the sort of dissatisfaction that, that Stuart talks about with the existing design and the width is obviously we've had to design, or Gagar in our appointed consultant have had to design something that, that suits the constraints of the site. Now, I, I fully appreciate where Stuart's coming from. A wider bridge would have been absolutely more desirable. It would have been more uh, pedestrian and cyclist friendly. But the reason they've narrowed the, the bridge at that point um, is obviously to encourage cyclists to dismount, to try and um, design out that. But just to pick up on your wider point chair um you know this isn't the final design this is um a costed design that's been put into plugged into the business case to see if it, it stacks up in essence along with the other um, designs that steve referred to 
Um, once we secure the funding, um, once the project is confirmed, um, the next stage of the process will be for further engagement with regards to the stakeholders, for, for you know, looking again at elements of the design, if there's some that we consider aren't appropriate, um, speaking to experts such as the Canal and Rivers Trust to ensure that whatever is designed is appropriate and safe for the setting. Um, and, and that will eventually lead to a, a final design that obviously moves forward to uh, to costs and construction. Um, but yeah, completely uh, agree with your point, Chair. It's not the final design and there'll be further opportunity to engage with uh, key stakeholders. Right. Thank you for clarifying that, Tom. Stuart, what, what we're being asked to, um, um, to look at today is the reallocation of funding from the... Um, Long Eaton Junction scheme to the um, to the other um, projects that are still running within the within the town's fund. Um, it's not in any sense talking about the final design of what those other projects are, and there will be other opportunities to talk about those. But we do have to decide whether we are reallocating the money to those projects or not, and that is the purpose of this meeting or at this point on the agenda. And if we don't reallocate the money to those projects, then the money will simply um, be lost to the town's fund project. So there will be an opportunity to discuss the detailed design at, at future meetings and also outside of the board meetings. Um, but that isn't really what we're, what we're being asked to, to look at today. Okay. Um... Can I just say that um, the internet went off at the council for several minutes, so I've lost the thread a little bit. Um, as regards the three million extra, um, what is, I feel, crying out is that we upgrade the path from the proposed Broad Street Bridge all the way to Midland Street. Now, if any of you haven't walked that route, I encourage you to park in Astor Car Park and walk it and see it. Because if we're providing this bridge at Broad Street, it needs upgrading all the way to, to Middle Street. So to me, the three million that, that it's crying out for it to be employed there. Um, but thank you for that. Um, Tom, do you want to comment on that? Um, I can't commit, Chair, that there's sufficient funds to, to do all that Stuart's asked for, but what I will commit to is that the, the bridge, um, it's not about just designing the new bridge, allowing for its construction to link to that point. There are wider improvements to the towpath and its setting that will need to be looked at as part of the scheme, uh, and that point is, is accepted. Uh, thank you, Tom. Um, Maggie Fruit. Yeah, it's just really on that point. You know, the Canal and, Canal and River Trust have done a lot of work improving many of the footpaths along Erewash Canal and other canals as well. So it's perhaps something that we can chat to, to the Canal and River Trust about to see if they're willing to put some investment in to, uh, to improve that foot, the, foot, the canal towpath, uh, as Stuart indicates, right to Midland Road. So I think that's something that perhaps isn't for this project, but in conjunction with it, we could get that funding from elsewhere. Okay. Thank you, Maggie. And the, I say again, it's it's about building relationships, isn't it? And you know, and we are working closely with Canals and River Trust on this project. And we do have Tom. I'm sure you'll have the opportunity to to ask them ask ask them whether that is possible. Yeah, as you know, Chair, we have a national lead on the um, the design group for the the bridge, and um, they will continue to be engaged with that process right through the uh, the more detailed design work. And um, absolutely, pick up on Maggie's point. We can we can talk to them about wider improvements that they they may be able to uh, to undertake. Thank you, Tom. Stuart, does that does that answer your questions? Not quite, I'm afraid. Um, I know that future housing isn't exactly enamoured with the ramp right in front of all their um lounges and, and bedrooms just just a couple of meters away from from there or a load of their units um now i've proposed an alternative bridge uh, which occupies just the council land the cul-de-sac of britannia road now is this being considered has it been valued um it, is acom going ahead with the design that it's got at the moment because we've already declared it pretty substandard um Tom, is this? Do you want to comment on 
Right. Again, I'll, I think I'll, this just comes back to I'll we're take not this at comment, the final Richard. design stage. Steve? Uh, yes, absolutely. We're, we're not at final design stage. The preliminary design, the, I just remind the board that the Britannia Bridge design is the one on which we received the letter of comfort from Futures Housing from. Now, obviously, that was some time ago, and we're looking to refresh that relationship. Uh, but I'm just remind the board that Futures Housing gave us a letter of comfort on the basis of the original bridge design in that location. We've had no such confirmation about alternative bridge designs in that location. Given the time scale of the business case process, we've run through with the concept of a, of a basic bridge design in this location in order to be able to get a business case in, into place. And at the moment, we have no costing for Stuart's alternative, um, quite apart from any other considerations about uh, uh, how that, that fits in with, 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 the, with the wider process. So uh, again, I don't think this is an issue really for debate at the board. I'm happy to talk to Stuart about his alternative design, um, but th that's not what we're asking at this moment in time. What we're asking is that we reallocate some of the capital funding that was previously allocated to Long Eaton Green in order to cover the fact that actually any bridge over the canal is going to cost two and a half million pounds each. Uh, thank, thank you very much for clarifying that, Steve. And Stuart, I mean, you've got an offer there from Steve for you to be able to, you know, discuss discuss your feelings and um, proposals going forward out, outside of this forum. Right, I'll be delighted to to do that. Thank you. Uh, the, the, we're actually being listened to. Thank you. Thanks, Stuart, and um, thank you, Steve. Does anybody else have any other points or questions on reallocation of funding to the walking and cycling? Okay, Vaughan, Vaughan Morris. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. Thanks, Richard. All it is, it's leading on to the next point, really. Um, it looks as though on item six, the stable block managed workspace project is going to have 540,000. Uh, sorry, that 540,000 would, would remain unallocated to any town deal project. Uh, the things that we're talking about, improving towpaths and improving um, the connection between Britannia Road Bridge and uh, Midland Street. It, it could all do with widening three and a half metres. Um, you'd have to increase the embankment slightly, but is that type of project, simple project really, something that the 540 Hundred thousand could go towards. Um, so, thank you, Vaughan. Steve, do you, it, it might be worth you actually talking about the reallocation of funding as part yes. of your answer to Vaughan on, on this. Thank, thank you, Chair. I think Vaughan has introduced us onto the next item, so I'll, I'll cover the next item. Um, so, um, following from the, if, if the board is, is minded to. Uh, Pursue with the, the previous two items, it would leave the £540,000 unallocated uh, at that point. Um, looking as to where we could use that money within the framework of the uh, existing business cases and value for money assessments that we've had, um, we couldn't allocate it to the West Park Leisure Hub because the West Park Leisure Hub business case is too finely balanced as in it, it would cease to be value for money if we put additional money into it. And we're pretty much in the same scenario with the Galaxy Row project. The project that we have on the table, which has a very strong value for money case and therefore can absorb additional expenditure without causing any, without undermining the value for money case is actually the stable block project. That's the strongest value for money project that we have within the whole Long Eaton town deal. So the, the recommendation um, before the board is that we utilise that money within what is an, a, a, an existing costed and value for money assessed project on the basis that we are 
we know, I wouldn't say we're confident, as, as in we absolutely know that we'll still be able to demonstrate a very strong value for money pr project um, as, as a result of that. If we wanted to progress any other options at this stage, we would have to design and cost the additional elements which which people feel that they are asking for and then assess whether or not they had any impact on the value for money appraisals that are going ahead at the moment. And regrettably, that's why I wouldn't recommend introducing new elements at this point. It's again, it's a time uh, situation, which is that uh, to, to cost up a new element cause existing business case processes to add that new element into the business case. Um, I honestly think that we'll be putting those business cases at risk at this point um, because we're, as I hope I've indicated quite clearly at this meeting, we're already extraordinarily close to the wire in terms of actually getting business cases through and approved and project summaries confirmed to government within the time scales allowed. Thank you, Steve. Um, does anybody have anything that they'd like to ask Steve about um, the reallocation of the money to the stable block project? OK, I can't I can't see anybody there. Steve, can I can I just clarify the the situation on on this? Because I'm not sure everybody will be fully aware. So the Arrowash Borough Council, because the stable block is an Arrowash Borough Council asset, have actually put uh, some of their own work putting a substantial amount of Arrowash Borough Council funding in to match fund the stable block project. So the 540,000 is basically reducing the amount of match funding that Arrowash Borough Council will be putting into the stable block project. Can I ask how much of Area Washborough Council still contributing? Because it doesn't it doesn't remove your liability for this, does it? No, uh, thank you, Chair. No, it doesn't. There would still be uh, a £159,000 contribution from the Council, and that's assuming that uh, the project can be retained within its existing um, budget limits um we would always like a little bit extra on top to allow for contingency um on, on this project but yes it's that's e exactly the case um the, the borough council has currently committed from its capital program to gap fund this to core fund this, this project um the additional allocation would allow the council to use those capital funds to deliver public good elsewhere but we would, the council would still have to be putting capital funds to the tune of 160,000 into this project um, to make, to in, in order to make its original budget function. And I'm happy to defer to Tom, who Thanks, of course Steve. is Tom. project managing this. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to make the point that the figure Steve refers to as the council's contribution is subject to a successful outcome from the um, the, the council's bid to the the public sector decarbonisation fund. Um, if that were to be unsuccessful for any reason, the council's um, contribution would have to increase. Um, I haven't got the exact figure in front of me, but it's it's nearer to 300,000. Um, so it was just to make that point that it is contingent upon that that bid being successful. It would change um, if it were to be rejected for any reason, Chair. Thank you, Tom. Um, uh, Maggie through. Thank you, Chair. Just going back to Steve's very good point about the uh, reallocation of the Arrowash Borough Council capital funding to other projects for public good. Is there something specific in mind that then we can feel that actually it's been spent in another way that's going to uh, benefit rather than it just being sort of a bit here and a bit there? So I think you, if we put in a, a quite a huge amount of money back into the uh, Seattle Block project, it'd be good to know that that funding is going to make significant difference in another uh, part of the borough. Thank you, Maggie. Um, Steve, before you come in on that, um, we've obviously spoken earlier in this meeting about um, potential other projects at the Long Eaton Green, 
Um, is this something that could be that, that would have to be done outside of the the town's fund project? So, you know, building on what Maggie's just said there, is this potentially something that could be used for that? Steve. So thank you. Sorry, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, I'm, there's a limit to what I can say on this because um, I'm not in control of the council's overall budget. So I'm thanking Maggie for for her query, and I think my only answer I can give to that is that that's a position that's going to be considered through the council's budget process, which is of course a, a formal, public, open, and accountable process. But I would support, uh, agree with your point, uh, Chair, that, that clearly it, it's not a town deal, part of a town deal process. Uh, thank you, Steve. Maggie, is that, does that answer what? I'm, I'm not surprised with the answer because I do understand the processes, but it'd be quite good to know when it's gone through the budgeting process, if this board could have feedback as to you know, where that reallocation of money went. I think it's quite good you know, when we're spending a lot of public funds uh, for the town's fund uh, deals and we've been moving around different projects that when we've released funds from one project to go back into the council's uh, pot that it's actually you know, quite good to know where it's been spent. For the taxpayer's point of view, I think it would help us all uh, know that the money has been put to uh, public good. Thank you, Maggie. Um, so, if I can just so what you're asking is that we just get feedback um, to the to the board about how the council has actually allocated and spent that money that's that's gone back. Yeah, that'd be really good. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Jeremy. Thank you, Richard. Um, well, you know, um, I understand the the concept um, behind that query, but of course, individual pound coins don't have any particular project name on them. Um, so it would be hard to say what particular things um, that particular reallocation would go to, although one could perhaps contrive something. But I, I'd like to make a point about the um, my understanding of the philosophy behind the town projects um, in their entirety. So uh, we were lucky to have the opportunity to bid for the nearly 25 million. Um, and when we did so there, even at the time, uh, with the costs as we understood them at the time, it was a struggle to fit everything in. And um, of course, we've had rampant inflation since, as we've acknowledged um, several times. I don't think it's the uh, underlying philosophy of the town projects for local authorities to put their own money in to make to make the schemes work. Um, but we Eros did do so, or I said it would do so on the stable block. Um, so I think conceptually it is right um, that that subsidy from the borough does come down um, because you know it's not intended that local authorities put money in that way. Um, in terms of the council's budget, as, as has been said, um, there's a separate process for that. Uh, the budget will be agreed, I think, on the 4th of March, perhaps the 3rd, um, the 4th of March, and that uh, budget will show the um, capital of programme of the council and the funding thereof. Um, but it won't show specific um, sources, e.g. the reallocation from this project. Um, nevertheless, we can give feedback on the council's um, budget, and I'm sure people will then see what excellent value for money um, the council is delivering. So we just thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, Gary Smith. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, uh, Richard. I just wanted to follow up. Um, Angelica, are you are you back with us now, please? Okay. Richard, per Richard, oh, perhaps. Um, I'm, I'm oh, sorry, Angelica, you're, you're, I've just you're, got back just, in. Just back in time. I was about to do a vote by exception, but as soon as you're back, we'll... We'll do the full roll, roll call vote. Yep, no problem at all. Councillor Hart? Yeah, approve. 
Uh, Maggie Throop. Approve. Councillor Tony King. Approve. Maureen Vieira. Approve. Ian Viles. Approve. Vaughan Morris. Approve. Keith Reedman. Agree. Michael Luckin. Approve. Pete Wern. Hello, Pete. I'll come back. Stuart Allen. A agreed. James Gregory. Approved. Andrew Saville. Approved. Pete, are you back with us yet? No. Richard Ledger. Approved. Thank you. Well, that's uh, that's carried. It's all agreed. Okay. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Um, for that Angelica. So with, with a unanimous vote with the exception of Pete who we couldn't couldn't get a hold of. Yeah. So thank you very much um, everybody for your support on that. Um, if we could move on to the next item on the agenda then please which is um, uh, Tom's going to give us an update on where we are with various projects. Tom had it. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we've discussed quite a lot of detail regarding a number of the projects today in the report that covered uh, the reallocation. So I'll just go through the pertinent updates. And as usual, if there's any questions, I'd be uh, happy to take those. OK, um, starting with the, um, the stable block, um, officers have dealt with uh, a great number of uh, queries that have come about as part of the, the clarification exercise for the tender that was submitted for the scheme. Um, I'm now pleased to say we have identified a principal um, contractor, though that's not yet been communicated to them. So hopefully that's something I can I can pass on at the next meeting. Um, we still expect or still await an answer with regards to the public sector decarbonisation scheme bid that I mentioned. Um, either way, the project adjustment will ensure that there is suitable funding um, for the project to proceed. Um, the council awaits its application, its own application to the planning and listed building consent permissions that were sought. And as Steve's mentioned earlier, it's anticipated that will be at the beginning of, uh, of February. Um, the full business case is the next step for this one, Chair. Um, we obviously need to plug in the, uh, the final costings to that. That is an internal process, albeit, although it will be verified by uh, Quad in advance. Um, and the good news is that we're now looking um, with the contractor at a, a potential start on site in early April. Any questions on the stable block? Okay, move on. Tom. Okay, move to the waterfront. Um, we've progressed the design to REBA stage three. Um, since the last board meeting, flood risk assessments have now been complete. There's been an initial ecology survey undertaken and there's some further work on that to now be carried out in May. Site investigation work is progressing. Um, we have paused on the planning sort of status of that scheme in, in relation to the planning application that will be required because it's uh, so intrinsically linked to the bridge design. Clearly, we're waiting for the results of the walking and cycling um, outline business case to be assured first. So we know that the project um, is confirmed and then it's envisaged it will progress to a, a full planning application for that scheme and the bridge design um, once completed. Okay, any questions on, on that? Uh, Stuart Allen. Um, I, I think you know that Vaughan and I are fundamentally opposed to option three on health and safety grounds. Um, I draw the attention to the fact that the path in West Park is 3.5 metres wide at weekends, uh, lots of traffic, people, you, you overflow onto the grass. Now the, um, the towpath at the um, Lawrence, where it joins, joins Lawrence Road, is 2.6 metres wide. Near the lock, it's 2.7 metres, not, not 3.5. So I've never, ever seen a mobility scooter on the towpath. I've seen lots of cycles, cyclists, lots of pedestrians, but never, ever a mobility scooter. And I asked myself why. Now, people who use mobility scooters are infirm. They have limited movement. They have heart conditions. And I, I believe that it's risk aversion. They'd never use the towpath uh, because if they fell in, they'd be unable to climb out or they'd have a heart failure. 
Now, Marcus has gone on, Marcus Chandler, uh, about Regent's Canal. I've had a very good look at that. I've had a look at the videos on, on YouTube, and I've had a look at um, Google Maps. Uh, and the traffic on it is absolutely minimal. Um, there's, there's virtually no, no, no traffic at all. So he, when he waxes and wanes about, we'll be safe having mobility scooters going along the towpath. We'll have two-way traffic, we'll have cyclists, and an ever-increasing number of youngsters on e-bikes e whizzing around. Uh, it, it is fundamentally flawed. Uh, now, Vaughan has another opinion on this danger, uh, particularly the, the danger for, for, for us people on, on this committee. So can I hand it over to Vaughan? Um, Stuart, do you, do you want to let Tom um, come back back on this? And Tom, again, you know, is 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 this the right time? There will be there will be opportunity to discuss this further. Absolutely, Chad. I don't want to appear dismissive of any of the concerns raised because uh, some of which, you know, I share and they'll need to be um, ironed out in the, the next sort of design stage. Um, the proposal we have in front of us is for the bridge is, is the one that was accepted by all of the key stakeholders, which was, was critical because, as you know, we needed consent from all stakeholders. Um, it isn't a final design. There's lots of work to be done to address risk, to make sure that whatever we um, propose, of course, we'd want to be safe for, for the users. Um, and there'll be further opportunity through design meetings, through further engagement with those stakeholders um, to discuss a number of these detailed concerns. And um, they will be mitigated, of course, wherever possible to ensure that whatever is constructed is uh, is safe for use. And that's the only response I'm able to provide at this time. Thank you, Tom. Vaughan, did you want to um, did you want to come in at this point? Uh, very briefly, all it is. Um... Under, under health and safety legislation, anybody on a board, anybody who alters a design, uh, makes decisions, can be seen as the designer, the designer, a designer. So that's all it was. Just when we make decisions, just bear that in mind. It's not going to be just the architect who gets the blame or, you know, whatever. It's uh, we, we can all be involved, that's all. We can all be involved in it. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Vaughan. And, you know, the, the plan is for us to create something that's fabulous and beautiful and contributes to the town. And, you know, I think as a board, we all want to be involved in something that we can be proud of go, going forwards. Tom, I think we can, we, can, can we say to, Vaughan and Stuart, that they will be further involved at, um, at, at all stages of the design and that their, their input will be, will be welcomed. Absolutely. And I, you know, I would like to make the point, we, we are employing um, competent professional designers who are engaging with, with stakeholders such as the Canal and Rivers Trust that, you know, um, they are the expert. They manage thousands of kilometres, thousands of miles probably of, of, of uh, local sort of national towpath uh, networks. Um, and of course, we will continue to address these concerns with them. But, you know, and wherever possible, we'll engage with um, with, with all relevant stakeholders so that we can we can invite that discussion. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Vaughan? Quickly, I'll just let you know, I've asked the Canal and River Trust under Freedom of Information for uh, their records about drownings in the uh, local waterways. Uh, not had a reply yet, but uh, I'll report back as, as soon as I hear any news on that. Okay, in, in, that would be interesting to hear, Vaughan. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And Stuart? Yes, um, there's a fundamental flaw in the Gagarin design. Um, when we designed the bridge at the lock, if you came from West Park and wanted to go south towards Trent Lock, you actually turned from the end of the bridge, did a U turn, and you did it against the wall. So it's fundamentally safe. Now, the Gagarin puts you at the end of the bridge and it turns you straight round and you U-turn at the lock. And it's a high wall there as well. So if you fell in there, you'd have to struggle several metres south to extract yourself out of the thing. So at the very least, it'll need an extremely strong fence, dog proof, toddler proof, everything else proof, all along the side of the lock there. And I suspect that Canal and River Trust will draw the same conclusion that they can't maintain the lock adequately with that there. 
So Gagara's design needs to be changed that's such but, that you turn at the end and, and, and then turn towards right. the factory wall. Okay. So obviously, um, both yourself and Vaughan have been involved in design meetings with Gagarin. So, you know, you're, you've got information and party to everything that's happened so far, which the rest of the board um, actually aren't, um, which means this really isn't the best place to talk about this. You've got a commitment from Tom that yourself and Vaughan will be involved in all of the discussions and the, um, and the meetings going forwards and you will have an opportunity to, to raise these issues with the designers. I think that's all that's all that we can offer you at the moment, Stuart. Um, and, and just to reassure Stuart Chair, there is no decision being taken today by the board um, regarding the business case for this scheme. That is indeed coming forward next month. Um, the decision today is simply to reallocate funds. Um, and as Steve mentioned, a number of options have been costed. Um, we've obviously proceeded with the higher costs, and that's the funding that will be secured to make sure the project um, is a goer. Um, and and um, that is all we're asking the board to consider today in terms of that funding reallocation. Uh, which we've already approved. Yeah. So, yeah. OK, so, thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, if there's nothing else on walking and cycling, do you want to move on to the next project then, please, Tom? Um, I will do. That was the waterfront which fell under the, the West Park Leisure Hub. Um, I was referring to there, Chair. That is um, the one that we're sort of paused on, waiting for the Broad Street Bridge um, design to progress. Um, the other part of that project, as you'll be aware, is the, um, the West Park events field. Um, similar to the stable block, that is going to a, uh, a meeting of the planning committee for determination um, early February. Um, there will be a similar need to develop the full business case for that scheme in conjunction with the waterfront because it forms part of the same project and that will need to go through the same local assurance um, process and then be considered by the council's section 151 officer. Okay, any, any questions regarding that? Okay, Tom. Okay, moving on to, uh, to Galaxy Row. There's been further uh, discussions with the council's external legal party regarding um, further slight amendments to the, the statement of reasons. Uh, work now turns to preparation for the next step of the CPO process, um, and that will be to serve what we call RFI notices on the target properties that the, the scheme is looking to acquire. Um, just for anyone's information, RFI notices, it's a request for, for further information from the property owners. Uh, we've done desktop searches and searches on all the legal titles, but this is the formal process to serve them with notice um, to provide the council with any further information that will be maybe relevant to the, um, the transaction or the, the conveyance. Um, the next step for that then will be to, uh, to progress with making the actual CPO order for that being drawn up. Uh, and serving final notices on the, uh, the property owners. Um, on the other side of this chair, we've also been progressing further work for the um, procurement process for getting a, a, a developer on board for the scheme. We've also been negotiating and talking to our um, appointed uh, planning um, consultant with regards to um, changes being made and a submission being made for the, uh, the outline planning application. Any questions on that one, Jeff? Um, there's uh, nothing, nothing on that, Tom. OK, moving on, it was then the, the walking and cycling. Um, I think uh, if you're happy, Chair, we've, we've discussed um, those in enough detail. We know the process is for those and there'll be a uh, an outline business case, um, hopefully to be approved by the council executive next month with a, a report to the board to authorise or, um, the project summary document. Thank you, Tom. I think that's, that's, that's all everything, isn't it? It is. Um, yeah. Obviously, there's the, uh, the ongoing process with, with Quad for the, the highway scheme, the two highway schemes. Well, it's one highway scheme, so I apologise. Um, and that is the High Street and the Tamworth Road. That's going through that process and officers will continue to, to deal with uh, Quad over any queries they've got regarding the business case. OK. Um, does anybody have anything that they'd like to ask Tom about um, a current update on progress? Okay, all right. Thank, thank you very much, Tom. Um, we're going to go on to the um, next part, which is communications plan. And Stuart, you've popped up on my screen, so I take it 
you're you're going to present um, where we are on this, please. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, I'll try and keep it short um, and and give you a, a sort of update on some of the things and challenges that uh, comms have been dealing with. Um, the first thing is that uh, certainly January, uh, and thanks to the project champions that uh, were live on Airwash Sound uh, for the various projects, uh, and that included uh, yourself, Richard, uh, James Gregory, Carol Hart, and I think last up is Eden Viles on the stable block. And uh, that, that, that was good to give us valuable publicity and update the, the, the uh, public on the various projects. Um, we've been around all the retail points and cafes this month. Um, reason being, as you know, uh, space is limited uh, through the Christmas period trading, uh, particularly in supermarkets. So we've been around everywhere to reinstate the various uh, pop-up banners and leaflets, uh, particularly in Tesco, Asda, Aldi, and numerous cafes uh, around the town. Uh, currently, we are preparing the content for the next issue of ABC Today. So there'll be a full page uh, on the Long Eaton Town Deal projects and the spring issue that's due to be delivered to all households uh, in Long Eaton and throughout Airwash from Monday the 5th of March. Uh, so as I say, full, full page there uh, on the Long Eaton Town Deal projects. Um, next week, uh, we will be re releasing an artist's impression video uh, walk round of the stable block. Uh, so that will be up on social media next week. And we hope to get a, a, a good response there. Um, if the business cases are all on track, which we, we, we hope they are, uh, towards the end of the month, we will promote the cycling and walking network and also the high street projects. Uh, we're also looking to schedule a uh, Long Eaton Town Deal uh, promotional activity at Airwash business networking events uh, to be held in the spring and the autumn. Uh, those dates are still to be confirmed, Richard, uh, but there's a possible opportunity there for project champions to, to attend. Um, lastly, um, as you'll know, uh, previous publicity, the community team, communications team have been making use of the council's assets uh, to promote the backing Long Eaton and delivering town centre regeneration message. Um, as you know, this is a cost effective, cost effective way of getting the message out. And we're now uh, carrying out some design and research uh, to stick a refuse bins uh, in the Long Eaton area uh, with a generic a generic uh, Long Eaton Town Deal message. So that's that's at the early stages, uh, but another opportunity to to get the message out to the doorstep. And that's it, Richard, from comms. Uh, thank you very much, Stuart. And, um, you know, we'd be um, with my partnership hat on and obviously Ian's in the meeting as well. You know, we'd be delighted to have you at the um, at the business networking events. And I think it'd be a good opportunity to talk about um, talk about what's happening. Um, Pete Wern. Yeah, um, quick question. We have over 800 members at the 50 plus forum and we, we send out information to them four times a year uh, by email and snail mail through Derbyshire County Council who fund this. Would it be possible to include a publicity leaflet about Town Deal Board, either in digital form, on email, or in hardback form? I could supply, obviously, the contact at Derbyshire County Council who do the mailing out. A very simple answer to that, Pete, and it's yes. That's perfect. Um, shall I email you? I think I've got contact. Yeah, just email me direct, Pete, and we'll get that organised. Thank you very much. And th thank you for the offer of doing that, Pete. That's uh, much appreciated. You're welcome. Okay. Does anybody else have any any questions or comments for Stuart regarding communications? Okay. Stuart, as always, I'm really impressed with what you guys are, are doing doing for this you know it's um, um 
congratulations and keep up the good work. So thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Chair. Okay, uh, just leaves us with the date of the next meeting, um, which is Friday the 24th of February, again at half past nine. Um, thank you all for attending today. I'm sorry we've overrun a, a little bit and um, enjoy the rest of your birthday, Maggie. Thank you. Thank you very That's much. Still got, still got work to do before I can relax. <laughs> you, you've not stepped up to do the um, any questions at Dolly Abbey before.